Hi and welcome to my playhouse and today we're gonna be trying and power on my uh, blade sensor down here it has been years since we have played with this so a lot of you guys probably don't even kind of know what a blade sender is so um, yeah we I thought we should go over that and see what that is all about um, I've done multiple videos on this blade sensor years back when well that was very interesting I was doing 3d studio max rendering and it was very good for that because it's very compact and it has a lot of processing power inside a very small space at the time GPU rendering was not really a thing but yeah you can't really fit GPU rendering inside of this model of, of blades for this blade center you can but but it's really not that great because it yeah never mind as I don't use this blade center very often it's off it uses quite a amount of power so I had this I boot bar here which is um, it's an automated way to turn things on and off and that is actually connected to the blade center so in theory if everything is still connected from last time I was playing with this I should be able to turn on the blade center from my phone using this I boot bar so uh, we're gonna try that I have also done a video on this I boot bar if you search for that on my videos I got this from an awesome subscriber and fellow YouTuber, MMV Block. Let's use it again. Okay, let's see if we can do this. Uh, this is the iBoot bar. It has eight connections that you can turn on and off. I think I just need to turn on. Let's check. So it didn't turn anything on. Maybe I need to kind of select everything. Let's just select all of them. Oh, this is tiny with my big fat fingers here, but it seems to be oh, doing it on. It clicked. It's turning. Oh, you are outside of you. It's turning stuff on here. And the blade sender just came online. It's going to be noisy to start with. This is the IBM Blade Sender H, and uh, this is a blade sender that has room for 40 blades. And each of these is a server of its own with two processors. Well, actually, this one is a dual one. That it's a it's a dual server. It has a CPU on one of them and a CPU on another one. And this is actually an IBM Power machine. It's an IBM Power Seven machine. But all of the other ones, uh, let's see, these are Intel servers, uh, one, two, three, four, five of them here. And these are Intel, uh, oh, all of them are Intel, sorry. And we see the orange exclamation mark has gone away, that is nice. So um, let's have a look at one of these blades. They are not really pushed into the machine because they use power if they are in there and I have had some trouble with it um, powering on the blade center so yeah this is a blade server from this era uh, they are rather old this one is from 2008 and this is the HS21 and um, yeah it looks like that let's uh, let's just have a peek inside they have a couple of tabs on the side here that you push and then this lever comes up and uh, there's two CPUs here, Intel processors so this will be the Intel Xeon 5400 series it has an internal hard drive here, it's a tiny one this is 73 gigabytes it's, uh, it was enough for my 3D rendering and it has some RAM and these are 4 gigabyte blocks so this one is equipped with 16 gigabytes of RAM 73.4 gigabytes of hard drives and two CPUs and um, I believe two one gigabit network interface cards so uh, that's this one let's see a newer one so this one is a couple of years newer this one is from 2010 so um, I believe this is the next generation of the Xeon processor the Intel Xeon 5500 series 
<coughs> the previous one was the HS21, this is the HS22. It uh, still has two CPUs. Now the hot drives are hot pluggable. You can take them out from the front here. Um, so that makes that a lot more simple when you're managing the server. And the RAM is internal and only half height. So the RAM is not taking up as much space in this model. I do also believe this is 4 gigabytes RAM blocks. Look at those. They are half height RAM. Pretty cool. 4, four gigabyte Tunix RAM. Hynix RAM. I'm not sure how to pronounce that. but Pretty cool. And as I remember it, this is these are 4 core CPUs. Uh, 2.4 gigahertz. Let's see the newest one I got. This one is a couple of years newer again, it's 2012. I believe we are on the Intel Xeon E5 2600 series. Uh, works with the version one and version two. There is no hot drives in this, but there is fillers. This one has a 10 gigabit network card over here. It also has a USB dongle for booting ESXi. This is usually an ESXi um, bootable device that is internal in the server. <coughs> and this one has a lot more RAM. Actually has some really powerful 16 gigabyte RAM blocks right here. Still half height, 16 gigabytes of RAM here. Awesome. Two CPUs, two hard drives, lots of RAM. It's, it's not 16 gigabyte, all of them. These two are 16 gigabytes. I would expect these are also, so a lot of RAM in this server. And then there are some four, there's, oh, there's two here as well. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight times 16. That's 128. Then there's one, two, three, four, a good amount of RAM in this server. This is the HS23, the, um, the newest one I have. So on the back of the blade sensor, everything is modular. And you have these modules that you put in. This is the management adapter for it. You can see you can connect the screen and a network connection and a couple of USBs. Um, this is actually for, you cannot connect the monitor and manage the management adapter, but you can connect the monitor and you can get access to the different blade servers. And that's also where you can connect the keyboard and the mouse. This network connections, on the other hand, that gives you access to a web interface where you can configure the, the management adapter, which again, configures the whole blade sensor. And it, they actually very nicely write down here that the default settings IP number is this, and username and password. So, very nice of them, thank you. There are room for eight of these uh, slots here on the back of the blade sensor. You can put in one of these management adapters or you can put in two. And if you put in two, you only have to configure one of them and the other one will automatically be configured. You though have to uh, firmware update each of them. Then uh, the total of eight slots means that you also well, this is also where you connect it to the network. And this is a switch. This is a Cisco system integrated gigabit ethernet switch module for IBM blade sensor. Awesome. And um, so this switch more or less has four uplink ports where you connect your, well, to the, to the rest of the network. And then internally, it will connect to the blade sensor and the network cards on the blade servers. And they will be switched in here. Uh, Probably there are 16 ports here because it, it starts at number 17, but another option is to um, pass through the network card. So instead of a switch, this is just a pass through module where you connect each of, uh, well, you can see there is five connections here, five connections here, and four connections here, apparently. So um, I have one of those cables. Here is the cable that goes into the pass through module. And here are the five Ethernet cables. So if you already have a uh, switch infrastructure, well, this might be the way to go. And and these were cheaper than the switches. So uh, yeah, for storage use, there is also um, fiber channel 
uh, adapters available here. This is a fiber channel one. I'm not sure how quick this is. I'm sure it's here somewhere. But a very nice fiber channel switch here. Six ports out. This one says it's an Qlogic six port enterprise fiber channel switch module. Um, yeah, from 2005, so it's there probably 4 gigabits. And here's another one, this only has two uplink ports, and it's from to also 2005, so probably 4 gigabits or 2 gigabits. I am not sure. There is also more modern stuff available, like this one. This is a 10 gigabit switch, and it has another form factor. There is, um, I believe there is two of these slots on the back of the server in there. So you can have a 10 gigabit switch on the top and one at the bottom. And they have been collecting dust here. But the normal thing is that you can connect this to the blade sensor and you can configure everything from the management module here. Um, sometimes with some of these switches you have to go into their own web page and configure the, the switch settings. Uh, I think this is might be one of them where it's giving its own IP number and you go in there and configure the switches but yeah that's how it works on the back so this is very much enterprise equipment this model I do not believe they are selling it anymore uh, IBM slash Lenovo came up with the the flex system instead of calling them blade sensors and that took over from this series I do not have a flex system yet but um, yeah, that's um, that's on the wish list. As said, there is room for eight of these modules on the back, and you will always try to get a redundant solution so that you have two um, two management ports, uh, two switches, and if you're using fiber channel, that's not a fiber channel. If you're using a fiber channel setup, you would also go for two fiber channel switches, and the same with the 10 gigabit, you would also like two 10 gigabit switches on the back there. I do believe that it's more noisy than usual and it does have an orange exclamation mark here. So uh, I have found on the back here, it's noisy back here, sorry. But it has two fan blowers, it's very difficult to see. So here is the fan blower out. These are not for fun, they're heavy as heck. So uh, I see that we have four screws here, we're gonna take that Try and take that apart and feel if it's um, well if it turns around. Weird. I don't see no problem here. Okay, that took a little bit of fiddling around. It turned out that um, it wasn't the fan blower that was the problem. It was the power. Uh, this. My boot bar has two power inlets and each of them control four of these uh, power things. So I've only turned on half of the blade center and apparently one of those powers each of the fan blowers. So yeah, that's, um, I stole the power from this switch box to power the iBoot bar here and now it's, it's working. I found out in here is the power supplies and uh, this one wasn't powered on. This one was powered on, and the same thing in the bottom of the blade sensor. There is an additional two power supplies. Only one of them was on. I forget which one though. But uh, now it's it's fully powered and it's not as noisy anymore. And I was already uh, ready to put in a spare part uh, fan blower, um, but that is now not necessary. Awesome! I have um, a laptop here. And I have connected to the IP address of the one management adapter in there. I have unplugged the other management adapter because power is something that I pay for here out of my pocket. So when I'm running this, I'm, I'm running it in a minimum solution. And then again, not because I could also unplug some of the power as we... That might have been what I've been doing, been um, half unplugging the, the blade center for it to not but it's very noisy when you do that, so uh, plug back in. This is what the management adapter looks like. At the moment, I'm not sure, I haven't upgraded this in ages. It says 2017 here. That's probably the latest firmware that I'm on here. And well, to get in here, it's user ID, capital letters, there. And the password is password with a zero instead of the O. 
Um, I have already been in here and told Windows to save this because I can't be bothered and you can't see those dots anyway. So, but the password is password with big capital letters, but the O you have to replace with a zero instead. And then we can log in here and last time it worked. And yeah, I have called my blade sender for LTV. That stands for Lone Tower Visual. That's my part of a film production company. And this is Blade Center 1. I should probably rename that. Um, and it tells me when someone was last logged in. And yeah, I, I did that just before I started filming. Very helpful to set this one uh, time out when it's gonna kick me off. I very much recommend setting that uh, so that it will kick you off after 20 minutes because sometimes this messes up. And if it's in a data center far away, well, it's bloody irritating to have to drive to a data center far away to um, to reset the IMM and uh, get back in. So yeah, make sure that it automatically kicks you. So continue. That took a little bit. And we get a very nice and informative at some point there. We can see that there is no blade connected down here and that's that's a bit of a shame. So I think we we probably need to, um, to pop in a blade. We also have a switch module which seems to be not connected to anything. Uh, have some temperature. It's cold out here in the data center. It's 19 and a half degrees. What is that all about? Can I even heat my data center at the moment? Oh, I'm cheating. I'm not using that much power. We would have to uh, give it some kind of a network connection for this to work. I probably have disconnected that. I haven't been using it for ages, so uh, yeah. I don't think we're gonna get that far today. We are gonna pop in a blade so that it shows here. You can see there's 14 blades. So let's uh, shift around here. These are all one type, so let's let's pop in one of them. I'll just take number two here uh, because uh, normally you, I always test them number one, and you know that. That means that that connection gets a lot more uh, wear and tear. And then we'll take one of these. That's an HS21. This is an HS23, uh, 22, sorry. We'll pop that in. And then we'll take one of these HS23s over here and plop that in. Ah. So three servers coming online. They are blinking, so that means that they are not on. So, let's see. Oh, I think it's updated all by itself. Wouldn't you like that? It's uh, discovering, discovering and discovering. So, um, that's great. So, it's it's working on that. It has the first one, which I have uh, apparently called LTV ESXi Host 22. Awesome. And it's 80% on the two next ones. So number two is the HS21 model, HS22 and HS23. So oldest, middle, newest. We have another little feature that we can mess with. So back over here again. I have cheated and been around the back and connected the, uh, the monitor and the keyboard to the, to the blade sensor. So. I haven't turned anything on, so it's not. Oh, I haven't actually seen that ever before. But um, apparently, that might be because nothing is on. But I think we should turn those blades on and see them power up. So, um, in the meanwhile, it has also completed over here. So, all of them are off, 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 but they're good. Let's see, we have an host 28, we have an ESXi 6. Let's just power the first one on. Uh, these are a little bit magic. They have a they have a, a little leather here. Oh, you can actually open that up, and behind that there is the on button there, plus a, a reset button over here. A tiny little thing that you can uh, put something pokey in and reset it. But at the moment we're just gonna turn it on here, there, and then we're gonna hit the monitor button which is one of them, uh, it's that one there, which means that that server is now the one using the monitor. Uh, oh, I was too slow, but 
it's actually booting now that server and it's on the monitor and the keyboard stopped making weird stuff and these are the x5450s in this server awesome and that server is booting it's gonna boot ESXi let's see 16 gigabytes of RAM awesome it has two network cards it has a RAID controller LSI it's prop it's not much of a RAID controller uh, but it has a tiny one you can do a mirror or a rate zero if you want that searching for hba let's see we have a 68 gigabyte of hard drive there and it's gonna boot esxi right yeah esxi is booting okay over here we can now see that the server is on uh, and then it updated it's on something of an issue here it's complaining about something what could that be one or more monitor parameters on on normal i am very much getting that the uh, three volt lithium oh it's it's actually says it right here the system lithium ion battery the tiny little button battery in there is low so it's not a big issue but yeah it, it looks really irritating so maybe we should just take that out and uh, replace that battery. So we can see this one is lighting up orange. So we're just gonna take that server out of here. Like that. There are some flaps in here that when I take the, the blade out of there, they flap in place so that the airflow is not gonna go through this one. Onto the table with that one. The operating table. I'm gonna open that up again. See, is that the battery right here? It is. It's uh, hidden away. Just give you a better look of that. It's it's right down. Oh, it's right down there in a nice little enclosure. So um, you ever so slightly bend those plastic things out to the side and move it forward like that, and then you take your replacement battery which is an CR2032 3 volts which you buy in your local well this one is from the local shop uh, where it's way too expensive but where it's available <laughs> pop that back in put this plastic thingy on top and we are good to go that's an easy fix And it's gonna um, it's gonna investigate that again. I am convinced that it's gonna fix that problem. So let's go back out to our main view here. And as we can see, it's discovering this middle one again. So I think we will we'll just power this one on, number 13. Well, it's not a lucky number, that's for sure. But well, we'll power that on. And this server, it's on the side of it. And there is also a select button for the monitor that we have to uh, to hit. There is also a CD-ROM drive in the blade center. That is uh, common that you can connect to each of the blades. And that's another button. Uh, there are two buttons, one for the monitor and one for the CD-ROM drive. I do believe it also comes with these two USB ports up here. So if you have a USB thing, you can pop that in and select the CD and well, you get that over there as well. So uh, let's um, power this one on and give it the is that monitor. So if something is initializing, so I think I hit the right button. Although now that is also complaining with an orange light. So uh, we'll have to check what what's going on there. Over here it has updated that this one also has some kind of an issue. So let's let's check it. Oh no, this is complaining about something else. It's um, unsupported blade blowers combination. It means that uh, this server is actually so new that the CPU uses so much power that the two fans that I have in the blade center is, uh, is not big enough. Uh, the one that I showed was a spare part. That is actually the blade uh, fans that I should be putting in here. So uh, that might be for another video. It will work. It's just complaining. It's booting and that one is as well booting ESXi 
Um, it didn't brag about what components was in it, so we'll check that when ESXi has booted. In the meanwhile, we might as well go and turn the last one on and see that boot as well. So we're gonna press that button there and monitor there. And it steals the monitor from over here. So now this server is the one giving the monitor output. So there it is also booting up and initializing. And now this plate server is also booting ESXi. 6.00 I see. So um, oh and we get some numbers. This is the middle one, so it has some E5530s in there. 12 gigs of RAM. Okay. And the last server is also booting and that has the E5-2650, uh, the, the first version of that CPU, 2 GHz. I do not remember how many cores, but 6 or 8 I guess. So I think we're gonna end it here. With a Blade Center you can control everything from remote. You can go in and see this screen on your remote computer screen as long as you have access to the Blade Center's management adapter in there. AMM, I believe they call it. If you're located near the Blade Center, you can you can just press the buttons down here and get to another view. That's the it, the keyboard is a bit slow there. And the last one. And it will blink up here until the keyboard is is um, active and I can press it. So I have three servers up and running. There is 14 servers in there. I hope you found this interesting. I have done a lot of videos on these blade centers, messing with all the different servers. So they are available on my channel here, but I think I might have gotten five, 10 times as many subscribers since last time I was messing with this. I could kind of see that I haven't had this on since 2018. And I think that was just a power glitch and it wasn't really meant to go on. So um, yeah, if you wouldn't mind, please remember to give this video a like. Otherwise, thank you very much for watching my videos. Do subscribe to my channel so that you can see me again. Maybe messing some more with Blade Centers if anyone is interesting. Have a really nice day. Bye bye.